I got a call once from a family. They have eight kids. They called me up. They said, we called up Shmuel Kamenetsky. We want permission, Psak, to throw our son out of, out of the house. And he said, we have to call you. And we told him, we're not interested in calling someone for advice. We don't want advice. We're done. We want a Psak. Can we throw him out of the house? And Rav Shmuel said, we have to call you. So we're calling you. So, I mean, they weren't calling for advice. And I'm not a Paisic. What do you want from me? I said, what are his crimes against humanity? And they said, he has a chup, skinny pants, and he listens to Gaisha music. Can you imagine? Can you, yeah, well, for, well, if everyone here would be very happy with that. But, and, and they're throwing him out of the house because if we're going to let it go, all the kids are going to have a chup, skinny pants, and listen to Gaish music. How, how, what kind of a nice yeshivish family is this going to be? So first of all, it doesn't work that way. Second of all, I'd rather have eight kids with chup, skinny pants, and listening to Gaish music than seven yeshivish guys and one dead or one Christian. I said, you realize, it wasn't off the dark. You realize if you throw him out of your house, he will not be from Right? You realize that. Yes, we realize that, but we can't sacrifice pants, the room in the legging of the pants. We can't do this. So, I mean, I can't, I can't, I couldn't breathe, I couldn't breathe, I couldn't breathe, I hyperventilate, I couldn't breathe. You're going to sacrifice, you're going to lose your kid. And they're good people. They're just stuck. They're like, we, we, ha we can't, you can't have a chup. You know, if we erased everybody in Klal Yisrael who 30, 40 years ago had a chup, listened to Gaisha music, and had funny pants, Three quarters of Klal Yisrael wouldn't be around today. I mean, it's nice that everybody should be yeshivish and firm, but that's not reality. And they, they were totally stuck. I told them, okay, I'm going to give you my address. I want you to bring him to me. You're going to speak to him? I said, no, I'm keeping him. I'm keeping him on one condition. You can never have him back. In my house, I don't, first of all, I don't mind the chup, and my kids have, we have chups, I have a chup, and skinny, my pants are not so skinny, but it's okay, and Gaishi music is fine by me, so why should we lose him? And I said, I'll take him, but I'm going to make him so frum and so yeshivish, you can never have him back. And then I told him, probably, I shouldn't have, I said, but I'm also on one other condition, you bring me your other kids, because you're not fit to be parents. You don't know what it means to be a parent. Everybody has this plan. We're going to have 12 kids. They're all going to look like me and act like mommy, and some are going to look like mommy and act like me. They're going to take after Bubi and Chesed. They're going to take after Zaydi and Asmada. They're all going to be exact, exact what we want, and they're all going to behave, and they're going to be great, and they're all going to be mamish, our Hasidus, not even the, the brother of our Rebbe, our Hasidus, mamish, or our yeshiva, and not too yeshivish, because that's crazy, and not less yeshivish, because that's uh, Fadarbin. And everybody's going to, and it's just going to be great. And you know what? It's so, it's a beautiful tefillah. It's a beautiful Hashem. We want all of our kids to be perfect, just like we all think that we, we're all perfect. We're normal, right? You ever do a shidduch or somebody? Guy says, oh, it's good for your kid. He's normal. What does normal mean? Like me. Yeah, the Chassidim say normal is like them. The Litters say normal like them. The Orthodox say the modern. Everyone thinks normal is exactly like the way we are. We're normal. We are the definition. If you look on the normal, there should be a little mirror. Right? And the way you look, that's called normal or in Yiddish, normal. Crazy. And then also we start having kids. And then this one's a little different. And this one's a little, a little this and a little this. A little, and we have, no, we have no tolerance. And it's very painful. Very painful. Because... because I, don't you hate when God messes up your plans? We made a plan. Twelve kids all looking the same. Then all of a sudden this goes wrong and this goes wrong. You can't control the, the kids that Hashem sends us. We do our best. Great, great, great parents. But at the end of the day, we have to deal with the challenge, not say, oh, minor challenge, kares, 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 kares. Throw one out, save the rest. Throw that number two, save the rest. Throw out number three, save the rest. Until you throw out so many, you have like maybe one or two left, and they're all traumatized because they lost so many siblings. What happened to Shimon? I haven't seen him here lately. Oh, he got skinny pants, so he got the boot. Oh, Mordechai, I haven't seen Morty around lately. Nah, chup, out. It's like you're driving up to the Catskills, and every mile you throw another kid out the window. You get there with a little mini, you know, from a minivan, also when you get there, you just need a little two-seater. Kids are not disposable. So everybody in our crisis center looks at those problems, we laugh at them. 
They don't. They're going to Rabbanim and Mechanchim. What am I supposed to do? This is horrible. This is terrible. It's killing the whole family. Killing the family. He, we caught him with a little radio and a little headphones in the bathroom. He's killing the whole family. And if, and if we go ahead and we don't make this kid take a haircut, they're all going to want to have chips. And then we're not going to do Shaduchim. It's a major crisis. So we can say, come on. To them, it's very serious. But you got a kick out of listening to it. It's not that different for us in our level. You're not losing your kids. You can't lose your kids. And just like you understand you can't lose it because of a chup and because of whatever, no matter what, you can't lose them. You totally de-escalated your family's crisis. It was an escalation. It was really bad. That's why you came here. It's calm. It's calm. You just got to get used to it, that this is the way it is. You tell your other kids, take them on trips. You got to take care of them. You got to bring them to Rabbanim. You have to be mechazik them. And you'll see... But as a Sashem, it's going to work out because they're going to realize what, what really Avoid the Sashem is. You know, Hashem told Avram Avinu, I have an Nisayan for you, I want you to kill your kid. A lot of parents wish that that was their Nisayan. It's not. It's, I want you to save your kid. I want you to hug your kid. I want you to be there for your kid. I want you to give up your perfect life or even not perfect life to save this kid, to make a room for this kid. In, within your life. And it's the best thing for the other kids, Be'ez Hashem also. But you got to work with them, and mechazek them, like I've said before. So when you look at these problems, it depends. If you go to, those other, to that couple who was going to throw their kids out because of the chup, and you said, this is what my daughter is doing, <laughs> they would say, throw it out. You speak to any mechazek, throw her out of the house. You can't, it's impossible. Hello, it's very possible. It's very possible. We have over 90, I think, three already kids trying to retire. It's, just, it's possible. It's not kishmak, but it's not impossible. You can do this. You can save them. Mitzvah all these chassidish kids that are out there, the bummers, that's what they call them. They're all tired in the shamas. They're all hurt kids. You go out there and make a barbecue for them and bring them out some drinks and tell them you're safe here. Zari Miklat. You're safe here. They're running away. They can't stand. You're in a nice neighborhood, a Jewish neighborhood. You say, here you're safe. Here there's no people looking at you. There's nobody judging you. Here you're safe. If you can get some money, we'll, maybe we'll help sponsor it. Make a shtickle kumzitz for them. See the kids, even if they're off the dark, they still like cholent and kumzitzes. It's a beautiful thing. You can do stuff with them. Zaitz makariv. You're going to look back in 10 years from now. You're going to realize that because of this terrible sign that Hashem gave you, you saved, you saved your kid's life, and you brought back five, ten neshamas to Hashem. You're going to feel so good. And these kids are going to start calling you tati. This happens all the time. Start calling your wife mommy. They start, you're going to hug them. They're going to say, I wish I got a hug like this from my father. I wish my father looked at me. This happens all the time to the TP kids' friends who tell the, our TP kids, you have the greatest parents in the world. I wish, because you're going to look at them with acceptance, and it's not going to be, it's, it's, you have to work on yourself. It's not going to be, oy vey. It's not going to be, oy Hashem, I got this. It's going to be, I, I hear the Nisayan. I accept the challenge. I know what I need to do. We can do it. Look around. You have so much support. You need help, we will help you. You have support, you have chizuk, you have inspiration, you have a mahalach, you have your Rebbe behind you. You go speak to the Rebbe, whatever you want. He's going to tell you exactly what to do. And then, this is the important part. You ready? Let go. You still didn't let go. You still didn't let go. And I don't blame you. I also can't. It's very hard. Just let go. You have the machla rechman alislan. You have the medicine. You have the support system. You have your kids okay. Your wife is great. She's fully TP, doing everything great. Just let it go. Well, how does it say? Let go and let God. That's what they say in AA. Just let it go. Tehillim, tzluka, tvila, taira, tshuva. TP, all the T's, and that's it. You're done. You don't have to, you don't have to worry. Uh, here's one thing you have to admit. In this list of problems, nothing really to worry about. It's not geschmack. But I don't think they're going to steal from you. If you think they're going to steal, you take your silver, you send it off to the silver store to clean for Pesach, let them keep it for the next six months. Don't keep cash around. Don't keep jewelry around. Fine. You have to be a little bit careful. Chabdeu, v'chashdeu, fine. But these are good kids who are hurt, rejected. By the way, think about it. They all have Zaydis and Babas. The Zaydis could have been the holiest people in the world. They're in the Oilam Elyon. They're davening, somebody please watch over my kid. 
That's what's happening today. It's a holocaust. They're up there in Shemayim and say, can you please? And Hashem is sending it. Yeah, it's not kishmak for you. It, you. You wanted a boy and you got a girl, or the girl has a boyfriend and you wished it wouldn't be. But these are, you have to look past boyfriend, girlfriend, this. Neshamas. Neshamas are being sent your way. So what would the Baal Shem do? That's how you have to think. You have to think big. What, what would the Chazanish do? What would any, any real leader do? Chap neshamas. Chap neshamas. They could all be saved. You, mamish, you got a chap neshamas. Zayar Kaddish says the schar is amazing. It works. You're going to be responsible as a Hashem. Five, six, eight kids are going to walk down the chuppah. You're going to be there for them. They're going to be happy. You're part of doing something great. Right? Let's make Yiddishkeit great again. No? Has a certain ring to it. Let's fight for our kids. Let's, you know, you have to look away. It's not kashmak, it's terrible, and it's horrible. Right, and now what? It's terrible. Right, and now what? We have the medicine. Let's make them better. Don't cut them loose and make them worse. So that's what we're all about.